One of Spain's greatest writers and playwrights in Cervantes was Federico García Lorca. He was an influential member of literature that encompassed through his writing the topic of death. Also, he was a member of Spain's movement Generation of the 27, which brought many other movements such as surrealism and symbolism. But before we can understand Lorca's writing, we need to understand his life and why he wrote the way he did. Federico García Lorca was born on June 6, 1898, in Fuente Vallejo, Spain. He was the oldest out of four children and the son of a wealthy landowner and school teacher. Since he lived in the rural areas of Andalusia, it later inspired much of his concepts and his stories due to the exposure of such social conditions. He later moved to Granada where he attended a private school and then enrolled to the University of Granada to study law. However, in 1919, he left to live in Madrid and instead enrolled in Residencia de Estudiantes. Lorca stayed at Residencia till 1928, where he continuously spent his time writing, reading books, playing music, and even writing poetry. During this time, he also wrote his very first plays and lived with fellow residents such as Luis Puñal and Salvador Dali, which he later became friends with. Not less, Lorca's first works included Impressions and Landscapes, a prose work that followed the Modernista tradition, as well as a work that included many of Lorca's experiences and sentiments he had while attending university. Another of his books, Book of Poems, expresses experiences during his juvenile years. Lorca strongly opposed publication and often rather preferred to perform his own plays and poems. Further, though Lorca was later rewarded with acceptance and notable grandeur from, from his work, his first play suffered great criticism. In 1920, Spanish director Gregorio Martinez Sierra premiered Lorca's first full-length play, The Butterfly's Evil Spell a simplest piece that talks about a cockroach that falls in love with a butterfly. The play was only featured for four performances, since it received various critiques, and audiences responded by ridiculing the play. However, Lorca's second full-length play, Mariana Pineda, received better reviews and even had sets done by Dalí. Moreover, during 1925 to 1928, Lorca became more involved with Ali, and his vigorous friendship with him helped him realize his own homosexuality, although Dali rejected his advances. Also, during this time came the movement of Generation of the 27, which although Lorca did not affiliate with any movement, he became a notable figure for such group. The generation of the 27 was brought up after the 300th anniversary of the poet's death, Luis de Góngora, which emphasized different artists in the means of literature, art, poetry, theater, and more, encouraging free form of expressionism. The movement essentially divided itself into subgroups, such as surrealism, symbolism, and more. An example is Salvador Dali, who was part of Surrealism, a movement of art that sought to release the unconscious mind and dream-like works. As for Lorca, he became part of the avant-garde movement, essentially what Generation 27 was, where people's works often were experimental, unorthodox, and reformist, highlighting art, culture, and society. During this time, Lorca wrote poetry, including songs and gypsy ballads, in 1928. Furthermore, Lorca kept writing plays and poems throughout much of his life, talking about many social, political, and even personal issues. For example, in his 1934 prose poem, Lament for Ignacio Sanchez Mejias, discusses the death of Mejias, a bullfighter friend of Lorca. The poem plays Lorca as one of Spain's most elegiac poets and brought a legacy upon his name. 
In the poem, Lorca utilizes the repetitive line at five in the afternoon to capture a grieving and a melancholy tone to the death of his dear friend. Each section can be interpreted as the faces of a grieving person goes through first disbelief, then anger and resentment, third questioning, and lastly acceptance. For instance, at the end when Lorca dictates in his last lines, I sing of his elegance with words that groan, and I remember a sad breeze through the olive trees. He emphasizes a beautiful yet tragic memory of his death, and finally realizes that there is nothing he can do now but remember him and through words bring his memory to life. However, though the poem revolves mostly around Mejia's death, it still embraces the concept of how death is inescapable. Lorca wants his audience to realize that death will come to us no matter what, and as he understood that his friend wouldn't come back, it's the same thing everyone should understand. The only thing in our power to essentially allow one to live is to honor their memory and their bravery rather than engulf oneself in the past. Not less, Lorca ended with tragic death, alike Mejia's, shortly after the spark of the Spanish Civil War. Lorca was taken from a friend's house by fascist guards who were abhorred by his liberal views and homosexuality. He was then killed three days later. Although Lorca died, his spirit and name lived on through his remarkable works, which continue to be admired and loved. Federico García Lorca will remain as one of Spain's as well literature's most notable and outstanding writers of all time.